the issue that we have at the moment in, in public health or in health more generally is that uh, those antibiotics that we've been using since mm -hmm. the 1940s are becoming useless, becoming redundant because of the development of antibiotic resistance. So the antibiotics remain the same, remain the same chemistry, but the bacteria that they're fighting against have become tolerant, have worked out how to overcome those, uh, those antibiotics. Bacteria cause disease by producing what we call molecular weapons, virulence factors. And we had identified, again, what we would call the weapons assembly machinery. So by knocking out the weapons assembly machinery, we stopped the bacteria from causing disease. And that means that the bacteria don't die, they don't stop growing, but they don't cause disease, which means that our immune system can then overcome the effects of the bacteria naturally while the, uh, while the, antibiotic or the antibacterial uh, does its job. For me, there are, it's one of those things that's called a wicked problem where there are yeah. many, many complicating and complex factors contributing to this. Uh, you know, one of them is unconscious bias, one of them is conscious bias, one of them is discrimination, uh, one of them is lack of support for people that have caring responsibilities, yeah. which affects men and women, but more often women. A structure that was set up by men for men with stay-at-home wives, and that's no longer fit for purpose for anyone, so that needs to change mm -hmm. as well. But mm -hmm. it's, it's a many-factored problem mm -hmm. that needs mm -hmm. to be addressed. Mm -hmm. uh, sexual harassment in the workplace, uh, abuse and bullying in the workplace. These are the sorts of things that lead to... Uh, cultures that where people don't feel safe or respected or included and leave fine. And do you observe those cultures still in existence? Uh, I've, I know they are because I hear from people that right. they are. Data driven is good. Okay. <laughs> but I do find as a woman and perhaps others do as well that uh, a woman especially a woman with a lot of experience and a lot of expertise and credentials still doesn't get trusted or their opinion isn't valued as much as if it was a man saying it and I find that very frustrating so what I do in that occasion is try and get a man on side and say this is why we need to do things and bring that person into the conversation especially if it's to somebody above me mm -hmm. or uh, set up a, a review committee for something where I clearly need things done but I'm not going to have any sway unless I get an external um, opinion and, okay. and outcome. I manage by not prioritising housework. Yeah. So I, I try to buy clothes that don't need ironing. So I have not ironed anything for years. Right. I don't iron. And I try to buy clothes that don't need dry cleaning so I can wash them in the hand washing cycle of the... Yeah. So minimise housework because for me that's a drudgery that has led to women uh, taking on those roles because that's what they do. So I just don't do it. Yeah. And I have a very high threshold for dirt in my house. <laughs> I go madly cleaning up if I have visitors, but uh, it's it just that's not important to me. Yeah. What's important is that there is a good environment and a healthy, happy environment for yeah. people if they need it. Mm -hmm.